for you. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to uh, Second Life uh, MOOC. And there is our speaker, David Deeds. Hello, David. Hello, everyone. If you could just add in the chat Hello box. There. Hello there. Where you're from. I'm so, I'm so, I'm so glad I wore a shirt. I'm so glad I wore a shirt. <laughs> Okay, there's, our, there's David. All right, add in the chat box. Uh, as you can see, David is right here at the top right. Okay, there's his avatar, and there's David. You can take a look and figure out, you know, what the differences are. Okay. The, hair the hair is green for one of them. For one of them. I'm not saying if that's real life or second. It's echoing, David, so uh, you might want to... Um, Speak only through Second Life and not through uh, Wiz IQ. All right, so uh, today's that, going to be yeah, today's going to be really exciting because we're going on a tour. And um, before we get started, I'm just going to um, let you add to the chat box where you're from and anything else. Feel free to use the chat box. We'll be uh, keeping an eye on it. So uh, if you get lost. That's the place to um, ask for help. All right, so a little bit about David. David is very passionate about technology and um, about sharing. And I think that's what we most of us have in common here, that um, we would like to share so that you can uh, try things out and not feel bad about it but uh, realize that we're all exploring when it comes to first life and we do the same in second life. So David, I'm going to let you continue from there and tell us about what kind of work do you do in second life and why second life? Well, you know, I've got, um, I can hear something in the background. Yeah, I think it's sure Doris it saying, hello, hola, well, I... hola. Ah, okay. So maybe we should explain in, in just a moment. Nelly is going to wave her magic wand. And all of you with us here via WizIQ are going to see exactly what you're seeing right, right now. You're going to be inside a virtual world, but virtually. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a virtual world virtual worlds. It's virtual world squared today. So in just a moment, I'm going to click over. I'm going to go. Uh, I'm in Second Life now um, along with her. In fact, you can almost see me standing in front of you right there. And so I'll be doing the presentation as I normally would in Second Life. And then I'll click back here to the Wiz IQ session and uh, keep up just in case you've got any questions. So first of all, welcome. I see we've got folks uh, from all over. I'm in Mexico City, um, by the way. I see folks from Hawaii and all kinds of different places. So um, if everyone's ready, we'll go ahead and uh, get started. I've got my introduction ready to go. I, I hope to answer just about all of your questions. I'm sure that there will be some that I haven't encountered before. Uh, you're kind of a different audience for me in that um, you know at least a, a little about Second Life. Usually when I give presentations like this at, uh, at conferences, there are people who have never even heard of it before. So I'm going to assume a little bit more knowledge uh, on your part, and we can skip to the uh, how I actually use Second Life inside the classroom. And I'll get to why I first started and uh, some of the ideas behind all that. In just a few okay, minutes. before we go, David. Okay. So, yeah. can everyone before hear me? We, before we go off to Second Life, some of us may need to stay here. So, those of you who do not have an account in Second Life, please do not try to create one now because it'll take some time. So, I'll be taking you there virtually. I mean, this whole thing is virtual, right? So, deeper into virtual. So don't worry about it. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the screen sharing that I'm going to go through. All right. If at any time you have problems, 
feel free to add that to the chat. You may find that the chat has gone to the left, the bottom left, but that's okay. Just pop it up and continue writing. Okay. Someone Wilson saying that he cannot, because David's not talking right now. It's Nelly talking. So maybe that's why you don't hear uh, David. Okay, let's see, uh, this region, it says this region may no longer exist, but please double check your spelling. Oh, okay, so before we go anywhere, David, are you still there, David? Is that you? Okay, you moved. Yes. So, okay, so <laughs> um, there is the link, but some people are saying um, that they're not being, there are a few things that could happen. You may need to try twice. It may be that uh it needs to be tried twice but if it tells you something like we can't get you there right now but we'll take you somewhere closer by don't go there okay if they offer you another place instead of that link uh don't go there another thing i think uh you don't need to teleport you just need to say what does it say on the page um do you want this area or something, David? It's not the teleport that you click on, right? When you go into the link. Yes, that's right. It might be easier if people are having trouble with the, uh, the slurl and everything else. It might be easier just if you're in Second Life. What I tell people to do is just open your world map and look for Teaching 2. Teaching 2 is the name of the sim that we're on. So if you find yourself in Teaching 2, then we're in the southeast corner of the sim. Very easy to find. Some people find that easier to do. I don't do. know. I just went through the link, and, I, and it, it just took me there, um, except when I didn't have the right link. But it should get you there. Now, it should get you there. Now, remember, you're going to be on the ground floor. You're going to see this big building in front of you. So <laughs> if you fly up, you'll get to the roof where we're or you can take the, the stairs uh, the if you don't want to fly. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We do have stairs. We don't have yeah, an elevator. No, sorry. We tried to get the ele we tried to get the elevator to work and we couldn't get it to work. So uh, old school. Just got oh, I see what you mean. Maybe I got the fly. wrong link. Okay, let me let me uh, clarify. It could be me, David. It could be that I got the wrong one. Let me copy the link again. Okay, let me get the link again okay. to make sure that uh, it's correct. Okay, so. Uh, okay, let me try again. Tom, please follow it up. See if that one's better. Try that one, everyone, if you're going. Yeah. I, oh, Nan's link is okay. Yeah, I but see that. But Nan's the, links. The higher elevation. Wait a minute, but how come there are two different right numbers? Only. One says 5623, and Nan says 28. Well, hers goes to oh, the roof. Oh, directly to the roof. Oh, the okay, perfect. The yeah, that's better. You're better off to go straight to the roof. Yes, definitely. All right, so everyone can mm -hmm. hear me now, right? I'm talking right now. All right, good. See, so are you going to be in both places? And is everyone who wants... No, I'm going to go to Second Life. Okay, fact, I'm going to right screen there, share right so everybody, okay, I'm going to be here. frozen for a second or two. Uh, don't worry if you see me frozen. It doesn't mean that I'm not here. You could probably hear my voice, but you may find that I am now a statue in First Life. Okay, I'm back. Um, there's a language there that I don't know. Ishak, could you write in English? Because I'm not sure that we understand what you're saying. Oh, Susan's also using a funny language, Suzanne. What language is that? Okay, so sure. you're going over. I'm going over, David. So do you want to see how it happens? Okay, I'm off to I'm okay. off to um, the lecture. Okay, I'm in. and I'm on my way.
So okay, I'm in Second so, Life oh, right now. Should I, I'm not echoing, am I? No. Okay, no, perfect. No so echo. I can. All right, I think we are. I think I am echoing. Let me mute my mic, anyways. I'm going to mute my mic. And take off my camera. Okay, everyone, camera off. Okay, if you can hear me, I'm here, and I'm not going to talk, David. I'll be quiet. But in case you need my voice, it's here. And you can hear perfect. me just fine, right? Okay, perfect. All right. So I think we're ready to go. Uh, we've got two different audiences here today. We've got the folks who are actually with me uh, virtually, of course, <laughs> on the cyber campus. Who are probably uh, probably plenty uh, Second Life savvy, and then we've got the folks in Wiz IQ who are with us virtually, virtually, <laughs> uh, who might need uh, a little bit more of an explanation for things, and that's okay because we've got uh, the ability to accommodate uh, both audiences. I think uh, we're set up here on the roof of our cyber campus with a, a slide presentation. And then in the boxes that you see uh, rotating uh, to either side of me, there's the note card that has the extra text. Now you can go to SlideShare as well. I'll give you the, uh, the link for that. On SlideShare, I uploaded the slides that you're going to see in front of you today, plus the, the note card text, OK? So you've got several different choices. Usually, the, the way this works, is I try not to just read PowerPoint slides to people. I, I know I hate it <laughs> when I go to meetings and people just sit there and read slides to me. So we're going to try to make this as visual as possible. Um, I've got my notes, of course. Um, and at times it may seem like I'm actually reading my notes because uh, uh, because I will be. <laughs> but for the most part, I want to try to make it conversational. And I'll click back and forth and see if you've got any questions uh, via Wiz IQ, you can just type them into the chat there, and then of course the folks who are with me here in Second Life can just type them into local chat. Okay, are we ready? All right. Well, welcome to the uh, Collegius Peterson or Peterson Schools Cyber Campus in Second Life. Uh, Collegius is just Spanish for schools. Uh, Collegius Peterson is a private K-12 institution with 2,000 students at four campuses around Mexico City. Um, my name is David Deeds. I'm the technology integration specialist for the organization. Now, the title of my talk today is Using Second Life in the K-12 Classroom. In the process of explaining all this, I'm going to have to touch on uh, how I got started with higher education, um, the use of Open Simulator as well. But because we've got uh, other people who have been using Second Life in, uh, in higher ed for quite some time, going to focus on what I've been doing in the K-12 classroom. And I'm also going to just touch briefly on Open Simulator, but not make this into an Open Simulator presentation. All right, here we go. Slideshows working good. So once again, not death by PowerPoint. That's my goal. Um, I want to talk for maybe 30 to 45 minutes. Then I want to leave time open for questions and answers. Um, I don't necessarily want to make it uh, at the end where you have to wait. So just go ahead and hit me with a question, either via local chat or via uh, WizIQ, and uh, we'll see if we can get your questions answered by the way uh, as we're going. And again, I kind of assumed that we had um, a Second Life Savvy audience, but don't be afraid to ask basic questions. Um, I know everyone starts off as a noob. N O O B, <laughs> and I think you'll find that inside Second Life, uh, most of the people that you're going to meet are very helpful, um, and so we're going to try to do that same thing or be that same way today, as far as helping you get started. All right, speaking of get started, let's go. 
let's start with my background, and, and I appreciate uh, Nelly or maybe Doris, whoever changed my uh, my photo <laughs> for the uh, for the SL MOOC. I had my job search photo up with my suit and tie, and it was pretty stuffy looking. Um, I much prefer this one. As you can see, I'm equally handsome in both second and real life. Uh, I can't tell you which one is which. You'll just have to pick uh, which one is the second life uh, picture and which one is the real life. Um, but I've been using Second Life in education since 2006. Uh, I'll get to how that all got started in just a moment. Uh, so three years higher education, four in K-12 or international schools. Uh, for those of you who are doing the math, you're saying, wait a minute, that doesn't add up, and you're right. Uh, for about a year, I focused on Open Simulator. So let's get to my very first cyber campus. And you can see I'm wearing my Superman suit. Uh, I'm proud to say that my students gave me that. Uh, they jokingly called me Super Teacher, uh, much to the annoyance of my other co-workers. <laughs> um, but anyway, Wusong University in Daejeon, South Korea. I was working for the International Business Department. Uh, the school was importing students from all over the world, especially from China. Now, the idea was is that uh, my fellow foreign professors and I were going to be teaching these kids in English because they could not speak any Korean. I was going to be teaching them in English until they could learn enough Korean to understand a local professor's lecture. Now, what could go wrong with this plan, right? <laughs> it's, it's pretty obvious, or at least I thought it was obvious. The kids couldn't speak English either. So if you can imagine the first day of class, there I am. I've got my uh, meticulously crafted deck of PowerPoint slides standing in front of the room, talking to these kids, and within five minutes I realized that they could not understand the words coming out of my mouth. Lectures were going to be useless. The, the textbooks were going to be pointless. <laughs> I had to come up with something fast. And so I did some research. A friend of mine was working on a project for the New Media Consortium. And I suddenly discovered virtual worlds. I opened up our little campus. And suddenly, everything changed. I had kids programming. You can change the interface of your viewer, as you no doubt know to uh, Chinese, for example, to whatever the user's language is. And so I suddenly had kids programming. I had them doing computer-aided design. They were, uh, they were running their own businesses. Uh, it was quite a, a dramatic change and quite a successful change. OK. So here we go, brief history. So from 2006 to 2009, I worked at uh, uh, Wusong University and also uh, a school called Xingu College, uh, close to Seoul. I was teaching computer programming and business and marketing classes. In 2009, I got a little bit tired of just uh, being assigned already existing classes. I decided I needed to get some control over the curriculum, so I switched to K-12 schools. And of course, at the time, um, you know, Second Life is only open uh, for people who are 16 and up. Well, at the time, it was 18 and up. So I couldn't use it at first. I switched over to Open Simulator. And then at the end of 2010, uh, there was a teen Second Life. I'm not sure how many people even remember that now. Uh, it was around for years. It was never very successful because the restrictions were a little bit too tight. Uh, they would allow kids in, but if you were an adult, um, it was very hard for you to be able to, uh, to get in the grid with your kids. And then there were all these restrictions about whether or not they could go somewhere else. I never could see a way of using Teen Second Life in my classroom. But when it closed, they opened Second Life to 16-year-olds. So as of like 2011, um, even a little bit before that actually, I started using Second Life for the International Baccalaureate. I'll talk a little bit more about what that organization is in just a moment. Their information technology in a global society class. That's 11th or 12th graders uh, diploma program is what the IB calls 11th and 12th grade. Uh, but also middle school, fifth grade. Or At this point, let me check back with our friends. Here oh, thank IQ. you, David. That's that's very kind. 
and see. Checking chat. And let's see. Are you reading our comments or are we typing for nothing? <laughs> All right. Well, let me let me go back and see. Um, people are still saying that, well, these are a little bit old. Some people are saying that they can't hear me. How about now? I'm, I'm in Wiz IQ right now. How about now? Can you hear me? Type, how about now? Question mark. Well, I don't see anything there. So let me go back to uh, go back to our presentation here. Second life. All right. So let's keep going. We'll check back with the, the WizIQ folks in just a moment. Now, this is extremely funny to me. Not everyone thinks it's that funny, but I think it's extremely funny. This is my title, Beloved Leader. Some people always want to know why I'm called the Beloved Leader. And the way it got started was, it started with open simulator classes while I was in China. We had a lot of Korean students. As soon as we introduced open simulator, one of the first things that kids discover is that they can upload photographs and then put them onto prims or onto objects. And so they were creating these uh, Saddam Hussein like posters of me all over the walls. And then finally they realized that, wait a minute, we have a dear leader in Korea. Well, David can be beloved leader. So they would take my avatar's head and they would Photoshop it over Mao and, and Kim propaganda posters. I always thought it was extremely funny. But you also have to remember that in China we had staff members who were Communist Party members. <laughs> and they didn't find it quite so funny. Uh, now or before, I see. Uh, well, they did it before. I've got a Mexican version. If after uh, we finish here, if you want to go back down to the second floor, you'll see the, the Mexican version of the My Beloved Leader poster. Uh, let's see, raise their hand. No, no, okay, that, that was for Doris, sorry. That's okay. No, oh, go okay. ahead, David. We're... Yes, oh, keep going? Okay. All right. All right, so anyway, the beloved leader story. I always love to tell that one. So, we are on, either virtually or virtually virtually, our current cyber campus. It's number five for me. I've had five cyber campuses on four different sims now. Um, we always lease our cyber campuses from the, the new media consortium. Uh, there are a couple of advantages to doing this. Number one is the discount. Uh, you get a discount on the property. Right now we are leasing, for example, 8,000 square meters, and we pay $800 a year uh, to get that. Um, one of the biggest advantages, from my point of view, and certainly from uh, your administrator's point of view, is that when you lease from the NMC, all of your neighbors are going to be schools. Uh, you don't have to worry about the, the bar opening up next door. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or <coughs> even worse, I've had it. Uh, I've had it uh, much worse than that before. And we also have the quad facilities. Every center of every sim has some mutual facilities, so that you don't have to uh, recreate an auditorium, for example. Um, and we can uh, take a tour of that a little bit later. Uh, David, sorry for stopping you. Uh, love the slides. Okay. Um, it doesn't make sense, but I'm speaking through Second Life, and they can hear me, but they can't hear you, which is kind of weird. Right. It doesn't make sense, because you're also speaking through Second Life. Is there a way that you can maybe, um, I don't know, raise the volume? doesn't make sense. Um, let me see. Okay, hold on. Yeah, Alfonso, you can hear David because you're in SL. I mean, you're in, you're right here. You mean you can hear it? Are you listening through your Second Life um, audio or through your WizIQ? That's what I'm asking. 
But so am I. I'm talking through Second Life. I'm not. I muted my mic on Wiz IQ. Right, let me check some levels here. Right, okay. let me check some levels here. Yes, I did, um, uh, Nancy. I, I muted my mic on WizIQ. It's muted. I'm talking through. Yeah. Oh. Okay. How about, how about now? How, how about now? Does that sound I better? I think so because I lowered the volume on my computer. Um, ask them if it's okay now. Is it okay now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now in WizIQ? Folks in WizIQ, can you hear me? Back over there. Hello, can you hear me? Type it in. Can you hear me? You see, we're both in the same status. We're both in as co-presenters. There's no difference between David and I. We're equally, we're exactly, no, yes. we're exactly the same <laughs> in the uh, on with IQ. So, and we're both using Macs, so it doesn't make sense. Oh, I see. David, is your mic unmute? Did you mute your mic on in the WizIQ classroom? That could be it. Do you remember? Wow. Um, hold on. Wow. Um, hold okay, on. David's going to fly over there. He's just waiting for the jet plane to. Or is it a spaceship? I can't unmute it, um, Nancy, because. David's in as a co-presenter, just like I am. All right, I'm, I'm looking. All right, I'm, I'm looking frantically for some kind okay, of control. So you know what? No let's do what we did last before. Let's just um, you remember how to leave the class without turning it off. Remember the in the browser, the X. Um. Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, I see what you mean. Um, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, okay. So yeah, not the that. red, not the red on the right, but the X on top. Yeah. Right, 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 okay. right, right. Okay, right. Let me try it. Oh, I see what she's saying. It's the other way, David. David, it's okay. Don't do anything. Uh, no, yeah, no. Um, I see what she means. Um, okay, all right. Okay, continue. I'll, I'll do something. We're okay now. We're okay now. Yes. No. Okay. No. 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 Okay. no. David, you need David. You need to log back into WizIQ. You yeah. logged out. Yes. There's no yes. way they can hear you unless you're in WizIQ and you have your audio on in WizIQ. So that's what's going on right yes. Yes. So Hold that's on. what's going on right now. Sorry. All right. All right. So I think I think it's the other way around. I think you you have to uh, stop speaking through Second Life and speak through WizIQ only. All right, let's try that. Hold on. All right, let's try that. Then hold on. I'm just about to come back in. Are you going in with your um... co-presenter oh, link? Yep. Yeah. You will in a minute, Alfonso. Can you hear me though? Probably, yes. All right, I'm there. So you want me? To All right, I'm there. So you want me to unmute? Exactly. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. See, I've lost. Yeah, I've lost. I've lost my. Controls. See, I've lost. I've lost my controls again. I can't okay, see let's the see controls. If I can do it. I don't want to stop. Let me go back there. And okay, I'm here. Um, let's see. You're in this co presenter okay my mic is open now
Okay. All right. So now, now can you hear me? All right. So now, now can you hear me? Okay, they can hear you now. Probably going to be an echo now, though, right? Oh no, they can't. No. Okay. Yep. I can't hear you. I don't know if that's you a can typo. Hear me now. Can you just thumbs up if you can hear David? David, if you can just sing a song there. Oh, he heard you. Okay, they can hear you. Good. Okay. Okay, so now they can hear me. Yeah. All right, good. Okay, so... Okay, so now they can hear me. Second Life? All right, good. Okay, so I'm going back to uh, Second Life. And now I think we can uh, continue. Hold on just a moment. Let me find out where I am. Okay, so we are on the... International Baccalaureate slide. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with the IB, it's a worldwide organization that emphasizes uh, context and also flexibility. It's one of the first organizations that uh, offered computer science courses um, as a regular part of its program. And it also offers what's known as a, a humanities course. There are different categories, science, humanities, whatever. Information technology in a global society is actually a humanities course, which means it's an interesting uh, mix of the technical and uh, the sociological aspects of using technology. So that's what we've mainly been teaching in Second Life. Let me see if I can get to my next slide here. So there are three strands. There we go, and you can see some of our students at work. So there are three strands, as they're called, in IB. There's the IT system strand, the social and ethical significance strand, and then the applications to specified scenarios strand. So as I'm going to mention in just a moment, the the way that they tried to teach this class before was with kids sitting in a classroom. Uh, maybe a textbook, maybe two or three. Maybe they had the, the technical textbook. Then they had their uh, uh, The Gift of Fire was the, the classic one to, uh, to talk about the different sociological uh, aspects of technology. But they really didn't have any kind of connection with anyone else. And so it's, it's kind of ridiculous to teach a class called Information Technology in a Global Society uh, without any kind of society, <laughs> certainly not a global one. The reason I like teaching my special version of ITGS is because they do have the ability to interact with others. And we'll talk about some of those things, uh, some of the things that we did in the class and are doing right now, as a matter of fact, uh, via Second Life. One of the things is just working on projects with other schools in other countries. Uh, we have also helped schools, for example, here in Mexico. Um, they don't necessarily have the, uh, the kind of computer access that you would expect to have in a, uh, a private institution such as ours. And so we've been helping them with that as well in order to bridge the, uh, the digital divide. It's a two-year class, and so they have the chance to work on a project for a, a client. The client can be anyone. Uh, a local business or the school itself. Most of the students wind up doing things for the school, but again, it's the idea of designing problems or designing solutions to problems using technology. Again, some more students at work. So the, the hardware and software is covered, but it's within a, a context of society or in the environment. Uh, People have to identify the, the stakeholders, for example, when it comes to like a, a particular issue. They have to also study uh, what the impact of technology is. You know, technology can be a, a wonderful thing, but if you were to look at some of the dump sites in China, for example, where all the old computers go, uh, you, might, you might not think that these, uh, these disposable computers are such a great idea. It's, it's all a matter of understanding that technology is not an end in itself, it's a means to an end. And of course, what better place to do all this than in Second Life? So as I mentioned before, the, the traditional way of teaching this class 
So as I had mentioned before, the, the traditional way of teaching this class was just to use textbooks, uh, discovering computers, for example, in order to cover the hardware and software. There is actually an ITGS textbook that someone came up with now. Um, it's okay. It covers mostly the hardware and software. Some of the more uh, more sociological issues can either be covered by a textbook such as Gift of the Fire, or I tended to just teach without a textbook at all at first. When I first started doing this in China, uh, our kids couldn't read our textbooks. <laughs> so we had people just go out, uh, our students go out and just meet people and talk with people uh, in other countries and to identify different problems in different countries. All right, let's keep going here. So again, I decided to do something completely different, just like the, the situation that I had in Korea where my students couldn't speak English. <laughs> Once again, Second Life became the answer to my problems. Here I was trying to teach a class called Information Technology in a Global Society um, with no real way of allowing students to interact with others except maybe a Skype call or whatever. I didn't want to do that. What I did was create a cyber campus later. Actually, the kids don't start off with a cyber campus at first. And they are actually interacting. You see the flags flying out front. Uh, we've had interactions with, uh, of course, many schools in Mexico. Uh, our projects have mostly involved the United States with other countries. We tried to get one going with Brazil. I'll show you some of the, uh, the history with uh, schools in China as well. But our kids are actually interacting with other students and teachers around the world. We use Second Life to introduce our 12th graders, for example, uh, to different colleges. They'll actually go to the cyber campus of uh, a college that they're interested in going to, and we'll see if we can arrange uh, recruiting sessions or at least informational chats with the people who are at that campus. All right, as I had mentioned, we have had a couple of collaborative efforts all right, as I had mentioned, we had had uh, a couple of collaborative efforts. When I first started this in China, I was working for uh, Changchung American International School uh, in Jilin province. Um, it's near the, the, it's the border of North Korea. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it gets a little cold there. But we had an alliance going with a couple of schools in Beijing. And what we were trying to do is set up what we called the China International Schools in World. Uh, we got, we made a lot of progress. You can see, I think, in front of the cyber campus here, the little teleporters. Every school had their own separate cloud for their own separate projects. It worked out quite well. One of the problems that always comes up uh, when it comes to IB classes, however, is that you have to prepare for the final exam. Uh, and the final exam also includes uh, a project that, that the students have to do. And of course, we did not limit our students uh, to Second Life as far as doing their project. And of course, these other schools certainly didn't do that either. So what happened was that we got, we got just so far, and then the teacher said, listen, this is great, but now I've got to prepare my kids for the project, you know? All right, should I check in on Wiz IQ? I can actually call my chat up here. And let's see. All right, I don't see any questions. I see comments about the sound, but I think we've got that worked out now. All right, we'll check back a little bit later. And last year we had a uh, much more successful project. And last year we had a. Uh, a much more successful project, I think, as far as interaction is concerned, uh, in general, not necessarily in Second Life. We were involved with the National Association of Independent Schools Challenge 2020 project. Um, for those this particular effort, what they do is they pair schools in different countries, and then they assign them a problem. Ours was global warming. So our partner school was a school in Athens, Georgia, in the USA, and our kids worked together in order to solve uh, global warming. Now, unfortunately, the school in the USA had uh, technical problems. They were involved with wireless access. 
um, more involved with firewalls. One of the things that you might encounter if you try to get started with Second Life at your school is that your firewall policy <laughs> prevents you from connecting to Second Life. Um, I have an advantage here. I'm the guy who decides which websites are blocked, which ones are not. Uh, other people are not in such a uh, convenient uh, situation and they have to uh, actually get it cleared uh, through administration in order to get Second Life unblocked. So it's something that you might have to worry about. Uh, Wi-Fi access is always going to be a problem. I've always preferred to use uh, a LAN uh, when I'm using Second Life, but you don't always have that choice. So our, our students uh, created a museum or a kind of a showcase of, of sorts of different kind of global warming posters. They made their own posters. Uh, they were designing some different uh, solutions for uh, solving global warming. And they were, the idea was is that they were going to build simulations of these uh, outlandish, <laughs> um, completely non-functional solutions inside Second Life, because if that's one of the advantages that you have here, things don't necessarily have to work. Uh, you can just make a machine, for example, and have it move, uh, puff out some smoke, and it looks like it works. <laughs> the, the idea was is that we didn't want kids constrained um, by, well, reality. We wanted them to use Second Life, come up with a desalination plant, for example, um, a way of harnessing solar energy, a way of, of harnessing uh, different kinds of energy. Whether or not they really work didn't matter. I told them to just put their imaginations to work, tell us how you think it would work, and in Second Life, of course, because you can do simulations, then everything becomes a, a virtual reality, if not a reality. If you, it's kind of hard to see in the screen capture, um, but this is an island made by uh, her, her second life name is Max Chatnoir, and she works for um, a university in Texas. And so she took us on this tour of Genome Island in Second Life, and it's an example of how you can teach a subject in Second Life. It's, it's brilliant. It's a fantastic place. She's got all of these different simulations and other uh, informational settings in order to teach about uh, genetics. And of course, these are all the places that your students can go uh, once they're inside Second Life. Just one of the thousands of places they can go. So yes, that's another thing that we did too, is that we made some of the kids' projects um, revolve around how to get into Second Life and how to use Second Life. So while they were actually using Second Life as part of my class, they were teaching these kids in the USA how to use Second Life as part of their project, you see? It, it worked out quite well. It was a, a very uh, beneficial synergy there between the, uh, the efforts. All right, so let's uh, talk a little bit about what I do in these classes. Now remember, uh, when I've used these classes for uh, middle school, it was always a quarter or at most a semester at a time. And I say, <laughs> a quarter or a semester, what's going to happen once you get kids into Second Life they are never going to want to leave? <laughs> we had to, at, at our school right now, we're trying to get ready for the final exam, which is going to happen uh, next month. And we finally just had to cut them off and say, look, we're not going back into Second Life again until you guys are ready to take this test. Uh, they will form their own little communities. It's all kinds of wonderful things. But you have to tell them, look, you're going to have to start doing this on your own time now, not during class time. Kids really love this, okay? Uh, the older ones uh, enjoy all of the, uh, the aspects of Second Life that go with being able to connect with all these people automatically. When it comes to younger kids, of course, we've got them at Open Simulator, uh, and they just enjoy the building, although the, the hypergridding to other locations is also something that they enjoy as well. So here with uh, ITGS, we've got two years. I always start them off with just a, a blank chunk of cyber turf. I've got nothing on the ground whatsoever. And I just tell them, okay, now, at first, just build a house. And so it's, it's relative chaos uh, as they learn how to use prims and textures and everything else. Once they become a little bit more skilled when it comes to building, then I give them an assignment like uh, the art show, okay? Part of the art show, of course, is also building the art gallery. And so now what you've got is students not only learning the skills of building in Second Life, 
but by necessity because as soon as they start building something, they want to know about uh, they want to know about uh, doors and they want to know about uh, how to open windows. What's this? College students want nothing to do with SL outside of class. Interesting. What if, when I was in Korea, my administrators were skeptical of what I was doing. My fellow professors were extremely skeptical of what I was doing until one of the senior professors was walking down a hall and he heard people talking about what they are students talking about what they were doing in second life and they said oh was well, this the part of uh, professor Deeds's assignment and it's like no no we just hang out there on weekends so it's interesting that uh, some other comments that i've seen about uh, college students wanting nothing to do with second life here in high school i can certainly say that they hang out in second life um, some of them we can't get out <laughs> We've got no prims, no objects left on this particular uh, on this particular lot, simply because of students building things, and now they don't want to do away with their uh, their creations. At some point, I'm just going to have to take it all up. Here you see an example of one of the art shows that were put on. And let's see. Hold on just a moment. Seem to have lost control of my. Maybe it's just slow. My slideshow here. So the art show is one of the, uh, the first assignments. That oh, I there we go. Okay. So the art show is one of the uh, the first assignments that I always recommend. Uh, here, for example, you see one that we had uh, while we uh, while I was still in China. And what we did was we had the students take photographs of uh, middle school art. And of, of course, some of the students were actually involved with this, but they also took photographs of the younger kids. So it's an example of how you get uh, different kinds of programs involved. These kids were using Photoshop. Of course, they were writing their own scripts in order to create these frames. You can't see it in the screen capture, of course. But they were rotating through the different paintings. What I really like about this one is that our landlady, our NMC landlady, took some of our art and put it on another island where they were having an international show. And so hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people saw our kids' art, and they even had a little uh, comment, a little guest book, and they were sending our kids comments on their art. Here on our cyber campus where this screen capture was taken, we had their, the students had their first chance to use their Second Life groups. They go out and they find, as part of their assignments, different groups that they're interested in. Uh, it can be Chinese groups, Mexican groups, anyone else that they can communicate with. And then, of course, they do their, their marketing in order to advertise events like this. Okay, I'm keeping an eye on time here. Then, concerts, podcasts, as those of you who are SL savvy know, you can set up a Shoutcast server and you can actually stream music uh, via um, uh, WinRamp and other programs that you have. WinAmp, I'm sorry, not WinRamp. On your computer, you can do it live or you can do it recorded. You can put your avatars on a stage with instruments, animate them, and it looks like you're doing a live concert. This is one of the greatest ways of getting, uh, of getting parents involved. All right, so what are some of the things going on? I've already touched on some of them. The main thing that we're talking about here is being able to go through a design cycle. You can see that they're not always successful when it comes to cooperating. You can see that, well, this group of students is building on the ground. The next set of students doesn't like that, so that they build up and up and up. You can't see it in the screen capture, but it's like it goes up for like a hundred something meters more. The idea is to get them to design first and go through a, a cycle. Uh, the IB has what's known as the design cycle, investigate, plan, design, create, evaluate. And it, it sounds simple, but students are not really accustomed to doing this. They're also not accustomed to working in teams. It's something that is going to uh, amaze you as soon as you try to start doing something like this. Most students are accustomed to doing everything one-on-one. -on -one. It's them against the test. 
As soon as you put K-12 students together, especially down in like middle school, telling them that they have to work together in order to succeed, it's something that's very foreign to them at first. It usually takes me about a year before kids are really ready. In college, it's a little bit easier. But in K-12, one of the big things that you're going to have is this, this suspicion of, well, wait a minute, if I'm going to work on this project, what is this other guy going to do? Or are we all going to contribute equally? So it's just one of the dynamics that you have to keep in mind. Here's some of the work that's uh, still outside, uh, one of our future architects. This is the reason I don't have any prims or objects left on my cyber campus. Right? So the, the idea here is internally inside your school, you're doing cross-curricular work. You're getting the art teacher involved. You're getting the music teacher involved. Geography, uh, social studies, physics, math. You're able to teach all of these subjects in a way via Second Life that make it much, much more interesting. Outside the school, then you've got the global projects, uh, the NGO projects, uh, working with other schools as well. So problem solving, task-based lessons, I don't give tests. So problem solving, task-based lessons, I don't give tests. Uh, tests are dumb. The only thing a test tests is your ability to take a test, is my favorite saying. And so what it enables is truly individualized and personalized learning. In fact, when we were in China, 3D virtual worlds were the basis of our gifted programs and also our special needs programs. We were a small school in China. We had kids who could barely speak English together in the same class with kids who are native speakers of English. So to accommodate everyone, 3D virtual worlds managed to do it because each kid could perform according to his or her own abilities. And it's, uh, it's really kind of brilliant. And then, of course, as far as a gifted program is concerned, the kids who caught on were uh, practically professional programmers by the time they finished high school because of blended scripting language. So, one of my favorites, however, I mean, with all the benefits of using Second Life for K-12 education, I think my favorite happens to be the fact that students are in charge of their own learning experience. There's no way that they can <laughs> rely <laughs> on me. Now, I know, I know that sounds terrible, but what I mean is that I expect kids, by the time they graduate from high school, to be able to take a project definition, to be able to assign the own, to choose their own teams, designate who's going to be doing what, put together a project schedule, be able to follow the project plan, give me reasons why they designed their solution one way or the other, and all kinds of, everything defined by 21st century teaching and learning is something that you do every day when you're using Second Life in the classroom. And as you can see, here you can see kids communicating with our... Uh, and as you can see, here you can see kids communicating with our uh, students in the USA for the NAIS Challenge 2020 project. What I want to do next is create what I call the, the 3D Global Village. It's going to be done via Open Simulator, most likely, uh, versus Second Life, for a, a variety of reasons. We won't go into those right now. But what I want is our own grid, a grid specifically for just teachers and students. And it was my K-12 work inside Second Life that provided the inspiration for that. All right, we've got about five minutes left on the clock, but of course, as, as Nellie had said, there's nothing scheduled afterward, <laughs> but I did have this time pretty well. I just want to show you some student quotations. One kid said, it is incredible to see how you can relate to people all over the world. My favorite quip from learners, however, is, this is education's way to say welcome to the 21st century. I think that's pretty impressive.
as I've mentioned a couple of times, we are using... All right, even though not part of today's presentation, as I've mentioned a couple of times, we are using Open Simulator. Um, we've been using it here in Mexico for ninth and 10th grade computer workshops. Uh, we use Dreamland Metaverse. When I was in China, we used Reaction Grid. Uh, Reaction Grid doesn't open or doesn't offer OpenSim anymore. But we used a host company and we had our own private one uh, simply because internet access was so unreliable. Here in Mexico, internet is a little bit more reliable. And so we only use a host company, Dreamland Metaverse. If you want to uh, have more information on that, I've got the contact for Snoopy Pfeiffer. She's the owner of Dream and Metaverse, and you can contact her. And believe it or not, that's the end of the presentation. Not too bad, five minutes to spare. That's the end of the presentation. Not too bad, five minutes to spare. Thank you, David. David, can uh, you let me check back in with our folks in WizIQ. Could you only speak through WizIQ? Just let's try this out. Can you only speak, uh, turn off your... Yes. Uh, uh, your mic from Second Life and only speak through WizIQ. Is that possible? Okay, let me stop screen sharing for a second so you can see the uh, controls if you've lost them. I'm going to extend the class to Okay, David, are you there? David, are you speaking? Can you? Whoops. Looks like mine is pretty low, too. Can you hear David speaking? Whoops, mine is low. Okay. David, we can't hear you at all which is weird. Whose voice was that? It wasn't mine. Oh, we're getting voices from Second Life. David, you've got audio settings. Okay, we hear you now. Okay, go ahead. Now, easy, easy. Easy, easy. Well, easy now. I'm talking in Second Life again. When I'm in with IQ, everything is grayed out. I can't click on anything. Yeah, I can see myself. Yeah, screen sharing. But all of my controls are grayed, you see? But it comes down to the bottom left. Okay. Oh, okay. I hear you really well. All right, hold on. All right. Okay, now now I have turned off. Okay, can everybody hear Second yeah, Life? Now I'm David only speaking in WizIQ. Can you hear David? Can you hear me? Thumbs up. <laughs> can you hear me? Wow. Okay. Can um, you right, hear so David, me? Can, if, if I screen share, can you continue talking in Second Life? I just want to try this out. I have to try this out. I have to figure out. What's the best thing to talk through Wiz IQ for first life or second life? Okay, okay. All right, so here we are. Okay, okay. All right, can everyone hear me now? I'm speaking through Wiz IQ. Oh, yeah. All right, can everyone hear me now? I'm speaking through Wiz IQ. Can everyone hear me? Everyone can hear me. And now you're in. Now you're in screen share. Okay. Yeah, because I'm screen sharing. And now I can actually else. see the control. Well, no, it's right there. I don't see the screen right from Wiz IQ. I don't have control over. Uh, 
Uh, well, I, I can see the window. Okay, and I can see right. so, your okay, view. I gotta figure what's out. going on inside okay, Second so gonna, Life? That's what okay. I see. All right. Okay. So, does anyone have does anyone have any questions for the folks in Wiz IQ? Well, now I seem to have. No, that's in Second Life. Okay. Right. So, the folks in Wiz IQ, any questions? Yes, there's a question, or is that just a yes? Any comments? Um, feel Any free questions? to ask questions. Every question is a good question, as you know, because most of you are teachers. I'm going through the slides in case that prompts a question. And I'm still in... There was a question, I think... We'll look at the audience the now, chat. see who's here in second line. Yeah, there was a question... Um, Any questions from the folks in second line? Uh, the kids in school, how do they feel about it? Um, something about other teachers in school, how do they feel about... Uh, or the kids, how do the kids feel about, um, oh no, distance education, that was it. Is, is, would you, or do you know of anybody who uses in Mexico, who uses um, Second Life in distance learning? Not blended, but fully online, I guess. Oh, well actually, it's, it's one of the things that didn't come up uh, before, but one of the uh, the first things that other teachers realized when I introduced this in Korea, when I would show my, my fellow professors this, one of the first things they realized is, oh, this is the perfect way of teaching languages. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, Kip, I can't remember the guy's his, second life yeah. name is Kip Bone, I think. I think he's one of yeah. your uh, yes. presenters. <laughs> So he's like uh, he's like the expert when it comes to uh, teaching languages inside Second Life, but that's one of the first things that we did, uh, or my fellow professors did when we uh, introduced our cyber campus, is they started setting up these language exchanges. Um, it was successful on many different levels. One of the things that came up is that Asian students tend to be very shy when they're uh, Face to face, and even when we were trying Skype or whatever to uh, to have these language exchanges, uh, they were still very shy as far as try, uh, trying out English. But as soon as you put them behind an avatar, uh, they were fearless. And so we would make arrangements. We took kids to Dubai, all over the Middle East. Uh, they were in America. We actually had uh, Chinese kids uh, come to our cyber campus, and they were being taught uh, Korean by our kids. But yeah, language exchange programs, as far as distance learning, it's, it's perfect for that. We've had a, a couple of false starts trying to get those started uh, here in Mexico with schools uh, in America. Uh, and it was mainly due to uh, technical problems uh, in America, not in Mexico, weirdly enough. Uh, but uh, yeah, that was one of the things that we want to do, um, whether it's in Second Life or Open Simulator, is have a language exchange program so uh, you know our kids are, are pretty good at Spanish. <laughs> Have them teach kids in America how to speak Spanish, make it part of the Spanish lessons in America, and uh, of course have the uh, the kids in America teach our kids uh, English. It works out quite well for that. There's another, yeah. There's another question by Amin, who's asking. Hello, is everyone. Still, can you still hear me? How can we use this method to educate our teachers for teacher development or teacher training? No. Oh, you're not hearing me because I'm muted my mic. Sorry about that. The question Amin has asked is, how can we use this method to educate our teachers? Educate is such a nice word, educate teachers, but I think he means teacher training or professional development. Um, 
Yes, and that's something else that Second Life is perfect for. Um, and again, not so much Open Simulator, simply because I, I always explain, well, Second Life is where everyone is, <laughs> at least for the foreseeable future. We used, in China, we use Second Life extensively for professional development, mm -hmm. simply because we didn't always have the money to put a teacher on a plane to go somewhere for this seminar or that seminar. We took them into Second Life. We, they all had an account. They all used our cyber camp at home. And then they joined different groups within Second Life so that they got the announcement from the ISTE or uh, whatever group that they had chosen. And then they could go to the lectures or the seminars, uh, the work groups, for these different groups. It works out perfectly, and of course it's, it's also free. Um, I'm a member of, I'm always maxing out my groups. I'm a member of 25 different groups. So I'll go to Virtual Worlds of Education Roundtable, uh, VSTE, the Virginia Society for Technology and Education. It works out perfectly for teacher education. Now, you, you're going to have a, still a little bit of a language barrier, but even our uh, teachers here in Mexico who can only speak Spanish have nevertheless found some groups uh, that communicate in Spanish. And so, uh, yes, it's wonderful for teacher development. And it's There's free. Tell your administrators you. it's free. Bye. They'll love Wilson, that. Somebody. In Second Life has asked a question. And of course, I... Added. Do you see that? Um, the question is, are you the only one in Mexico? No, 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 no. In Mexico uh, City, or in Mexico, are you the only one in Second chat? Life? That was one of the questions. Oh, I see. Um, sometimes it seems like I am, <laughs> but but no. There is uh, the, the group SL Actions. Um, they sponsor a conference every year. Uh, there's a the guy that I've communicated with and met in Second Life who works at uh, UNAM, which is the big university here in Mexico. Um, I know he's in Second Life. I'm. I may be the only K-12 person working in uh, in Mexico, uh, but I doubt it. Someone's got to be out there somewhere doing something. Um, I just haven't met any of them. I've met people in higher ed who are using it, though. We'd like to have more participation. I'm about to change schools. Um, I'm about to go to the American School of Guatemala, and what I like about this particular arrangement is that our school is a member of a group, uh, the Grupo de Valle, the Valley Group, that includes two K-12 schools and three universities. Um, I actually have high hopes for getting my 3D Global Village uh, finally off the ground. Um, I, for a variety of reasons, uh, 3D virtual worlds are a little bit easier to explain <laughs> to people in higher ed. Um, there are a lot of people in K-12 who just don't quite get it yet. Um, usually what happens, what I have done, is I don't try to explain it in advance. <laughs> if you are working for a K-12 school and you're not using 3D virtual worlds right now, don't uh, create a proposal. Don't try to give presentations explaining what it's all about. Believe me, it just won't work. <laughs> they just won't get it. What I have always done is I've just started the, uh, the cyber campus, usually Second Life, sometimes Open Simulator. Just go ahead and start it. There it is. And then on day one, you can call the administrators in and show it to them. Take, create an avatar for them, sit them down at the computer and say, okay, here you are. Once they're in you know, it, I they get it. But if you're I just talking David, about it, they don't thing get it. Just it's not Believe me, they will not life. get it's it. Any kind of technology it doesn't matter whether it's Google Draw, Google Docs, or Moodle, or whatever, or WizIQ, whatever. If you don't show it to them, you know, if you don't take them in there, if you don't throw them in the water, they're not going to get anything. Explanations do not do it. That's that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well. I mean, we've got here in Mexico. We've got uh, we've got a board of trustees, and some of these people have they've just been around forever, um, and bless their hearts. I mean, they mean well.
but we've got people who think email is like this a new innovation you know what I mean <laughs> and so you're, you're sitting in front of these people and you try to explain okay now we're gonna create an avatar for you and we're gonna go into a 3d virtual world and we're gonna create simulations and, gonna, and it's just impossible but if you can create an avatar for them and on the day that you introduce it to them you take them in world and they're actually walking around you know stumbling around but walking around and interacting with things and then you take them on I always take them on a little tour uh, depending on where we are here in uh, uh, Mexico I always take them on the tours of the recreations of the places in Mexico and uh, someone out there has recreated like downtown Mexico City with the art museum and all this kind of stuff take them on that or even better if your administrator has graduated from a certain university and Second Life has a virtual university, take them to that cyber campus. That will sell it every time. If you're, we've got one from Stanford, for example. So, didn't understand what I was talking about. Didn't really want to understand what I was talking about until I took him to the virtual version of Stanford here in Second Life. And he's been my, my biggest salesman ever since. There was a question. Thank you, David. There was a question there uh, that Doris had added um, and somebody else added. Doris asked, oh, here it is. Gokhan Goover asks, what can they share at this world? I mean, can they doing something together, any application, little games? I mean, that cyber camp is pure. Cl oh, the idea is, are they doing something different or is it reflecting uh, what you do in the classroom, but out of the classroom? Oh, that's actually a very good question because... Oh, well, that's, actually, that's actually a very good question because one of the mistakes that I've seen many people make in Second Life is as soon as they get in world, they start recreating the classroom. And what they'll do is they'll actually build like a little school and put desks in it. <laughs> and then expect students to, to sit there. And of course, the, the first question the students ask is, well, wait a minute, we're doing this in real life. Why are we going into Second Life to sit at a desk? And, and that's why what we're doing right now is, is kind of unusual. I would never have a presentation like this um, for my students. This is only for other teachers. Now, if we invite a guest, to present to us, then it, it's different. Um, then we'll have students actually sit here on these benches and listen to our guest speaker. But I actually never lecture inside Second Life. My students are always involved in a project of some kind where they are actually building something or programming something or interacting with others. You see what I mean? Don't, don't use Second Life to recreate the classroom because there's just no point. And also, if you rent from the NMC as we do, we've got uh, we've got facilities in the middle of the uh, the sim, the quad, that we can use if we really needed to anyway. So you so you can see someone's having a good time. So you can see here on the roof. Yes, I've got a little presentation area, but it's mainly for special occasions like this, so David, where I'm talking to other yeah. teachers, usually not to other students. Although. Uh, a, Oh well, although I will encourage okay, our that's, students that's to give I'm presentations to other students. Sensing and and okay, if we put that aside for now, how do games fit in? How can you play in Second Life or do you not play? Are there pl I think Doris been asking this question, is Second Life playing games? A game or I mean life is a game, you know, too, but um like a game. learning through games All right. and That's... learning through some kind of, what kind of activities <laughs> do you do, for example? That's actually uh, another very good question. One of the things that I would recommend if you're trying to sell Second Life or Open Simulator or any virtual world in your school is not to call it a game. <laughs> Call it an immersive learning environment that will really impress everybody up and down the chain of command. But the the main thing to remember is that Second Life could be a game if you wanted to think of it that way. It's just it's not like World of Warcraft 
where you've got okay a, a quest that's that's carefully defined and all right once you do it then you're going to get so many experience points but it, it's kind of that way what you do is is that whoop, oh someone's oh okay what what happens is is that you can think of second life as a, a blank slate as far as the game parameters are concerned but you've already got the setting the environment is there uh, the sun rises, the sun sets. You can build anything you want to. You've got uh, the ability to animate objects. Everything is there. You just need to define what it needs to succeed. You see what I mean? And so, for example, in World of Warcraft, maybe your quest is uh, you know, killing 15 orcs and, and retrieving the, the golden chalice or something. Well, in Second Life, your lesson plan says your objective as of next week is to have chosen um, a, a, the textures that you're going to use for your building. You've designed your building. You've uh, created your group and you've invited all the members of the now that you can communicate with them, you see? So it, it's, it's a game without the predefined parameters. And if you, if you overlook the amount of work <laughs> that you have to do, uh, it's actually one of the reasons why a 3D virtual world like this is so great. Some teachers will look at Open Simulator, for example. When you start at Open Simulator, there's nothing there. There's this, just this 250 square meter chunk of grass, cyber grass. Well, now what? Well, if you really wanted to, you could set up that land to be an actual game where somebody stood down a path and had to be able to uh, finish this quest or this milestone in order to get to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. In the case of Second Life, what it enables you to do is to combine all of these activities with interacting with others. You see what I mean? World of Warcraft, yes, occasionally you gang up with other people, but for the most part you're working with non-playing characters. Everyone in Second Life is a playing yeah, character. Playing a role. You see that distinction? Oh, they're there already? They're supposed to wait for the we'll end of the trying class. Trying to pose for photographs here. <laughs> wait a minute. So did I answer that question? Yes, it is kind of a game. I wouldn't recommend calling it a game because I, I think of it as distinct from a game. It has a lot of things in common. But actually, uh, your possibilities are unlimited in an environment like Second Life, whereas if you're in a, a regular game game, you're quite limited as to what you can do. How, you know, um, I keep, yeah, I think so. You did very well. You know, I, I, I keep did I answer wondering that question? about people. How many people do, sorry, we'll get, wait, wait we're, we're going to wait. We're going to go there. Stand still here. I'm trying there to too, so hold on, get a everybody. picture myself. What I want to know is how many people do not have a Second Life account because I think that everybody would like to get in there, and um, and we want a photo with with the leader. Didn't you call yourself a leader or something? Second life leader or leader? So we want a photo with uh, with the leader, David the leader. Selfies. <laughs> They're taking selfies. So I don't see anybody raising their hands. Okay. So how many people have there, that's a good photo. have an account? Any yeah, other exactly. questions? That's what we'd like to Does anyone do. want to take I a tour out on the lawn and see some of our student so we creations? Go there. We're going we're gonna to share the link to Slurl again. Nancy, can you share the Slurl where we can get... Actually, no, we need to, sh to, to share the um, All right. downstairs, right? The Slur well, downstairs, not upstairs. It's right downstairs. Well, we can fly from the top. That's, that's always nice. We can take nice. the stairs. I'm just going to fly down. I need to screen share. No, I'd like everybody to go there. That's what I'm asking. We've got, you can actually, it's almost like an archaeological site here. You can see the stages they went through as they learned. Just a sec. I'm just, I just want to make sure everybody things. has an account. Around here on the, the corner of the building. David, could you add the slurl to the chat? You can see some of the first efforts. David, could you add the slurl to the chat box? But I encourage I'll, I'll them just the to slurl. keep up just for uh, for reference, for comparison. And at first you can see it's like, okay, no, wait a minute, I've got this shape, 
I'm going to put a concrete block texture on it. Yes, I can walk through the door. <laughs> Believe me, when you first start them out, it's going to be very, very basic. And that's fine. Because once they figure it out, then you can tell them, okay, now, look, right click on some of the other buildings, and now you can see how things are put together. And that's when they progress to stuff like this. I'm especially impressed with some of the, uh, the houses around here. Here you see kind of an intermediate result. And I don't know what this thing is. Got some kind of concession cart right here on the lawn. Again, I got to clean all this stuff up. We're just wrapping up a semester here. And so then I don't know what this kid's doing over here. I don't know what this is all about. But anyway, you can see the, the main buildings. <laughs> Some in blue glowing tower. Check out the building that these kids created. And you can walk around inside them. And this was all designed in advance using uh, Google SketchUp and just uh, using paper. But these kids are actually designing what they call their, their condos. And what's what's most impressive about all this is that most of this was done with, you know, not a whole lot of uh, tutorials from me. I, I teach them how to do the basics, how to create the shapes, how to manipulate them, how to put the, uh, the textures on, etc. And then every once in a while I'll have to answer a, a question because they want to twist something a certain way that they don't know how to do it. But they did all of this, 99% of this, by themselves. Here's this Mr. Huggy again is, <laughs> keep this guy away from me, okay? <laughs> Mr. Huggies. So I think it's pretty impressive. They've got the rooms all laid out. Uh, they didn't quite finish. They've got the kitchen here. Even got little stoves. Look at this. Little microwaves. I think it's pretty impressive. And again, you can see the progression from the building all the way in the back, which is just basically a, a bunch of uh, cubes stretched out with the texture slapped on it, to what they're building now. And this only took like a semester in order for them to make this kind of progress. We've got a, another building here. These kids took a different, completely different approach. But still, these guys built all their own furniture. They built stir. Well, no, I see they borrowed some furniture there. The hookahs. I told them, look, before we take parents in here, we're going to have to eliminate the hookers. hookers. <laughs> the hookers, too. <laughs> They, they do things like this just to uh, just to get to me. It's still not as bad. In China, what would happen is, is that we'd put everything together for like a, a parent show. And then as soon as the parents got in, like five minutes before the parents get in, they put up a, a picture of somebody's butt or something, you know? <laughs> so always testing my patience. See, look at these hookahs everywhere. I'm really impressed by this. Everyone that I've shown uh, these buildings over here is very impressed. I actually, um, it's going to be kind of difficult before the school year ends. I've got to figure out some way of making everybody happy. I've got to take some of this stuff up uh, because we are simply out of objects. You know that in Second Life you've got an object count. T. Fiona is saying, okay, hold on. There's David flying around. Fiona says, we are lost. I'm surrounded by... We need a balloon. We need a balloon. 
We need you to take us on a tour in a balloon or something. In a balloon. No, I'm sorry, I don't have a balloon. <laughs> But now, if you like, we can fly around the island a little bit, too. Again, one of the advantages of the new media consortium is that all your neighbors are schools. So you can see, just north of us here, we have the University of New Mexico. St. Edwards University. They've got an interesting little display here. And then in the middle, again, it's, it's one of the points that I try to make about not recreating the classroom, is that you've got plenty of places where students can sit inside a building. Okay, a balloon. Turned ourselves into balloons. No, I'm sorry, I don't have a balloon. Pardon? There you are. Yep. Again, Nelly. There I am. There I am. <laughs> well, I just I said, there you are. <laughs> That's it. All right. So, what do you think? Uh, do you want to well, stay like here to or do you want to go back to uh, Chilbo or what would you like to do? There we are. Um, what happened? Um, yeah, that was amazing. That was just amazing. What I love about Second Life, I don't know about you guys, is that it's so relaxing. You f oh, yeah? I see that the VWR is advertising for something. Some kind of meeting is about to happen. All right, thank you. Thank you so much, David. Uh, it was amazing. Here's a, a real clap from Real Hands. I said, it was amazing, David. Thank you so much. And here's a real clap from Real Hands. Uh, yeah, it is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, and it's very relaxing. <laughs> Life is super relaxing, no matter what. Right? Uh, yes. That's right, and... One of the things that once once everyone gets comfortable inside, um, again, it's it's the idea that uh, you can fly, you can do other sorts of things, but it's it's also just being anonymous um, behind this avatar that your students are going to find uh, very liberating, um, and, and as, as Nelly said, relaxing. Get inside the Second Life, and we have just like little chats where we just meet on the cyber campus. Uh, on our first floor, you see we've got our little lounge here. And yeah, we'll just have people from uh, America, people from different countries. Of course, uh, time zones are uh, a limitation. But everyone in America you can um, uh, you can make arrangements with. And just have kids just hang out and meet. I'll come onto the cyber campus and I'll just find students there That's doing great. stuff, talking with other people. They've got friends from all over the world now that they communicate with. Um, you know, what, what other kind of yeah. platform True. Give your students the opportunity to do that. Uh, Skype, they can communicate with people, but it, it's not like you can, uh, you know, build something together or create a program together or go exploring uh, virtual worlds That's together. Really, there, really there's true. nothing quite like um, it. Well, thank you, and uh, we'd love to have you again. I'm sure there's a lot that we can learn from you. Uh, Nancy, would you like to, you've got the mic, would you like to um, oh. offer us uh, a chance to dance? Dan uh, Nancy has an idea for dancing and getting a, yes, dancing. Nancy? 
dancing. Yes, okay. We can hear you. David, you can come back so we can see can you me? as well. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Just just for the camera. Oh, okay. I, I, Hold I, I, on. I yeah, please do. I just wrote a note in um, in uh, the chat that the dance floor we set up for the party last night, um, or night before last, is going to be up 24 hours for the rest of the course, and the music is great, and there's a food court. So anytime you come to the uh, Second Life MOOC headquarters, you can get a landmark, to get, or you can go out the building and walk around and 